What's up guys, it's Scrappy, and I finally got accepted into the finals playtest after about a day. And if you don't know what this game is, it's a new multiplayer first person shooter game developed by Embark Studios. So without further delay, I'm going to play the game and give it my honest review after a few matches. Let's see what the hype is about. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps a small creator like myself out a lot. I'm going to choose this fat man right here, and I think he's probably the closest one that resembles me. Damn, dude, I'm huge. My dude's like seven foot two inches, man. Oh my god, the big dude with the heart emote. All right, team of randos, let's do this. All right, so I can pick things up and I can throw them. All right. So I know we need to grab some cash and then deposit it. Looks like there's a vault over this way. Oh, there's a guy. Dude, the sounds, man. There is a fart cloud right there. The lie wires will need to reap. I see you over there. Oh my, I need to play some aim labs, man. What is this? C4? Can I fit through here? Yeah, I don't think so. My dude's too fat. Oh, no, yeah, my team's in trouble. Come on, guys. Scrappy is on his way. Oh, they're all on the bridge. One down. Got two. Let's go. That's a teammate right there, right? Three players per team? Yeah, I think that's a teammate. Let's revive this guy. I'm trying to revive my teammate, dude. What do I do with this? Alright, so I'm going to throw it through a window. Oh, shiz. Guy up there. I'm going to get him from behind, baby. Hello, friend. Goodbye, friend. Looks like a team wipe out for... All right, now what? So we need to advantage. deposit this cash. That cash out is on a moving platform. That's cool. Oh, there's a timer. Okay, so we need to defend. Honestly, this game feels great. I'm, I'm getting some old Battlefield vibes. Oh wow, look at that destruction. Oh, the building's falling. I'm gonna throw the C4. <laughs> oh my god, they're everywhere. Say hello to my little friend. Oh shit. Oh shit. I almost put myself up. The kingfish. Sweet. The we just cashed out. Let's go. And that's a cash out by the kingfish. Say like there's another vault over here. Let's open this bad boy. A majestic move from the team. Complete team wide for Oh, what the hell is my guy doing? Uh, I think that was my special, right? I think I activated my special. Alright, so we need to cash out again, it looks like. Wait a minute, we could ride elevators? Low gravity. That's pretty cool, not gonna lie. Dude, these explosions are insane. Five, four, 
three, two, one. Let's go, my first game. Got a team wipe. We didn't do so bad. I'm sure tournaments are really gonna test my skills, but man, that felt great. First place, not too bad, not too bad. All right, so, so far there's only one game mode out, which is the extraction mode I just played, where you're thrown into an arena with four teams, three players each team with a max of 12 players all together, and you must battle for eight minutes, finding and looting the cash vault, and then you must deposit the money, and the team with the most money in the end wins the game. It's a first person shooter game developed by Embark Studios, and after some research, I learned that Embark Studios is actually comprised of many former DICE developers who've worked on the past Battlefield series. After playing the game, I came to understand fairly quickly that it's very fast paced and intense. There is three types of contestants you can choose to play with, which are the light build, medium build, and heavy build. Each contestant can be edited cosmetically. You can change your face, your hair, and what you wear, and you could also equip and unlock different poses and emotes. Each contestant has different abilities and is able to choose from multiple types of weapons and gadgets that are only available to that contestant. For light build, you can use a pistol, semi-automatic rifle, a machine pistol, a dagger, a sniper, a sawed off shotgun, or even a sword and gadgets like glitch grenades, gas grenades, proximity sensors, thermal vision, and so on. For medium build, you can use weapons like the pump action shotgun, the AKM assault rifle, to a repeater rifle, or even a revolver. And for gadgets, you can use mines, zip lines, tracking darts, and even put down a turret to defend you and your team. For the big guy, you can use weapons like the machine guns, sledgehammers, flamethrowers, grenade launchers, and an amazing RPG, which I love and then you can use gadgets like barricades to shield yourself from enemies, night vision, grenades, and even C4. Now let's talk about the destruction. The amount of destruction you can cause to the environment is truly amazing. I was actually amazed how well it was implemented. I was throwing grenades, C4, and shooting RPGs. Buildings were getting blown up and falling down and windows were shattering and it just really felt like almost everything was fully destructible. The destruction felt relevant to the gameplay instead of just some pointless gimmick. Besides the visuals and the graphics being pretty good, the destruction mechanics and visuals really gave me that oh damn shit's going down feeling. This game really gave me those old ba battlefield vibes mixed in with fast paced action games like Shatterline and Apex Legends. The traversal around the map whether it be taking a zip line to another building or using a jump pad to fly up and shoot a rocket down on someone's head felt fluent but sometimes I did find myself trying to use a zip line and it wouldn't register making me have to click multiple times. You can ride elevators and jump on moving platforms, so there's always more than one way to navigate around the map, but there are some things that obviously need work, especially some balancing things like turrets being pretty overpowered in my experience. The RPG, which I love, might be a little overpowered, invisibility cloaking was maybe too long, the flamethrower was sick and could catch environmental assets and people on fire, but didn't do much damage at all, along with the range being really bad on it. The grappling needs to be touched up sometimes my character when I grab the ledge or if when he did grab the ledge it played like a weird glitch animation as if he grabbed it let go of it and then grabbed it again or when I clicked to interact with the zip line it wouldn't register and my guy would just fall and die but these bugs are expected in early games and I'm sure they will work those kinks out sooner or later in terms of optimization it felt great for me I played with my settings on max everything and I didn't get any FPS drops lag rubber banding or anything when I was playing the game streaming on Discord and recording at 2560 by 1440p resolution with OBS Studios. The guns looked cool and felt great when I was shooting at people. The hit markers and hitboxes seemed decently balanced and the running wasn't too fast or too slow. The audio, music, and sound effects was very immersive and sounded fantastic. Gunshots sounded realistic, the explosions sounded awesome, and I noticed that even when assets were dropped or when buildings would fall and assets would collide with other objects, there was some type of sound effect and noise they would make. When you deleted enemy players and the coins dropped, the sounds of the coins gave me almost a feeling of excitement. I believe they did a fantastic job with environmental sounds, but the footsteps, although sounded a little glitchy for me, and the directional audio might need a little work in my experience. My teammates' footsteps sometimes sounded like they were running in front of me, even though they were to my right or even behind me, and when they were above me on another floor, it sounded as if they were right next to me on the same floor. I had to check my earphones just to see if they were correctly placed on my head. Loading into matches was either quick, only taking about a minute or so, or sometimes it took a little too long. But this could mean a number of things. And I'm an ex-Tarkover, so I'm 
used to waiting a full New England winter season just to load into a match. But overall, the average time it took was more quick than long. I like that the cash amount is randomized. I played a match where I was in last place and while everybody else was defending their deposits and fighting, I opened up a cash vault and deposited it without anyone nearby and the cash amount was enough to bring me from last place to first place with just seconds before the match ended, ultimately making me bring my team and I to glory. I noticed that when I was playing the finals, it gave me that healthy dopamine fix. The fix where you don't need Narcan by your side in case an accident occurs. This game, if released properly and monetized properly, has the potential of being very, very popular. Now when I say properly, I mean no pay to win advantages. My only concern is microtransactions, the good ones and the bad ones. Buying a battle pass or paying for skins, whether it be for your character or for your weapon is all good because that's where a lot of the money is and I know they'll need to monetize the game for revenue purposes, but will and can some skins be considered pay to win? Like games like Call of Duty or even Apex Legends in the past has received some backlash in terms of cosmetics actually giving players a tactical advantage. Whether it be a skin that's dark and or camouflage and you can't see them, or a skin that makes the character's hitboxes smaller so it's harder for you to shoot them. Weapon skins or blueprints that allows the players to have a better reticle than the default gun reticle, or even attachments and weapons they can buy instead of unlocking it through the game's regular leveling system. Will all items and gadgets or weapons and contestants be free? And if not, will the ones that are not free have the ability to use different weapons than the free contestants? Will there be any weapons or items or game modes and new maps locked behind a paywall, making it so that you can't use any of those things without paying to play? I'm all for it, skins and cosmetics costing money, battle passes and such. I get it, and I'm not saying this game will be pay to win. I'm just skeptical and hoping that it's not. I just don't want people being able to buy a competitive advantage over others. With all things aside, as of right now, I feel like this game is very fun and addictive, and if you were to ask me, Scrappy, is it worth playing and giving it my time of day? Hell yeah, it is. I highly recommend it. Thanks guys. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit that like button as it does help me out a lot, and subscribe for future content. I hope this gameplay and review was worth your time. Have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one.